great afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to Dear Cyber Sue. I'm Susan McCord. Today's topic is five dating deal breakers that are too harsh. There's a lot of people that are dating right now and they are frustrated, fed up, and this is becoming an ongoing conversation. But some of the time it is because of our expectations and what we want on our long checklist. And this is I'm, I'm hearing this from so many men and women that it's becoming a bit of an ordeal because what's happening is people are going out, they're having a date and they're finding all these things that are wrong right away. And so they're basically sabotaging having another date with the person because they're finding all these things that aren't on their list. So what's happening is you should always have deal breakers and expectations, boundaries, all that stuff when you're looking for a partner. But you also have to be realistic and not everybody has all the perfect qualities. And while some deal breakers are way bigger than other ones, people are now taking the smaller ones and making them a reason for not continuing to get to know someone. So this is what is happening and why so many people are lonely and are not having the best dating experiences anymore. Because we all have what we want set in our mind. But unfortunately that doesn't always work because what we think we want sometimes isn't actually what we truly want in the long run. There's a lot of other little things that, that go into making a relationship great. So I'm going to talk about the five deal breakers that I feel are too harsh with people today. So number one is someone's too nice. So if someone's too nice on the first date, or maybe you get to the second date and you just find them too nice, too, too accommodating, too available, all those things. And so what you do is you say to yourself, yeah, no, th this one's kind of, it's kind of irritating me. I like a little bit of a bad boy or a bad girl. Well, the problem with dating people of this caliber, whether they are the bad bratty people, is it becomes drama after drama filled scenarios. It's something that you should really give thought to here because don't you want to be with somebody down the road if you're looking for a partnership that is kind and is putting your needs first some of the time or most of the time? Isn't that really what you want long term? I know it's hard to to really look at somebody if they're just so sort of needy and clingy and all that. I'm not really talking about those people. I'm talking about the person that's just nice, you get what you, you know, they are who they say they are and all these things, but they're just not that exciting for you on the first date. Please give them a chance. Do two or three more dates and just see, because if there's good qualities and you actually were attracted to them in the beginning, chances are it's still there. It's just you are already putting in a generalized thought in your head, oh, can't be with somebody too nice. It'll be boring. It's not always boring. Number two, they always have to pay for everything. Now, I know this one sometimes can be a bit more female-sided here, but the thing is, why should anybody have to pay all the time? Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who will say, well, that's just the way it is when you first date somebody. Yes, I would say that if the person asks you out, then they should pay for the date. But women ask men out occasionally now. And so I think whoever asks out should at least offer to pay. But I don't think there's anything wrong with both people contributing something to a date. I have talked to a few people who have said to me that they don't like the fact that they had to pay for this or had to pay for that on, on a date when really that person has paid for everything up until that point. I don't think that's right that you judge somebody based on their wallet and how much they're willing to, to pay for. Don't you want a relationship that's got more substance to it and more where you are on a sort of equal footing to a lot of the areas? I know that sometimes one person in a relationship makes more money than the other and you pool your, your things together. Well, that can come at a later date. But if you're already putting that on your checklist that they have to pay for every single thing, you're going to probably screw your chances of, of being able to be with somebody who's really a great person. So think about that. 
it's nobody's job to pay for you for every little thing. Now this one, number three, is going to get some people making comments, I'm sure. But sexual gratification, instant sexual gratification, should not be always expected. Sometimes it's really worth the wait because a lot of people, and this I find with women especially, when they do have a sexual situation with somebody, it changes things for them. They become more emotionally attached to, to you if you're the one that wants the sex right away. And so what can happen is it can change up the dynamic really early on the expectations of what maybe she wants in the relationship. Take time to get to know who they are inside because you may have sex with them and then get yourself into a situation where now they're attached to you and you decide, oh, I don't know if I really like them. I don't really know them. So please take time. Don't want instant gratification in any department. Get to know them a little bit. See if you like each other. We're all run, jumping into things way too fast today and then we make really quick assumptions and run away or walk away or whatever you want to call it without really knowing that person. Number four sort of goes with number three. You don't want to see them again because they're not hot enough. You don't feel that, that powerful, powerful attraction to them. But the problem with it is sometimes we judge people completely on their exterior rather than who they are as a person. So what happens, we'll go on a date with them. Yeah, they're not hot enough for me. I want, I want this, I want that. We have a type. And when you have a type and it's not working out for you all the time, you need to sort of look at what's going on here. You're, tr you're attracted to the same person that isn't working for you. Now, you're looking for a relationship. That's why you're here with this video. So if you're looking for a relationship, you don't want to repeat any patterns that haven't worked for you in the past. So if you have a type or you only want, you know, the hot, hot person, you're going to end up in the same result every single time because you're only putting one thing into what you want in a relationship. That's your priority. And so what happens if that's not there, you don't let the other things come in and make you eventually really like that person because you've judged everything on sexual chemistry right away. So be very careful of that one. And number five, they're independent and have their own voice. Now, this can really bother some people because they don't want to have somebody that they're challenged by. But when you think about it in a relationship, don't you want to have some fun conversations that you don't always agree with each other, but it makes you think and you make them think because you're sort of being challenged by just their personality, their independence of who they are as they stand alone. So you just have wonderful conversations all the time. You have discussions. You actually both have an opinion and you actually appreciate their opinion. It might not be completely what you're thinking, but that's okay because they're being who they want to be and they're expressing who they are. And that's when you know you have a great relationship, when you both feel comfortable enough to express and discuss things truly to who you are because you want to be yourself. You don't want to be giving, giving up anything for somebody else. You both want to be able to compromise and be yourself in a relationship. So in closing here, the, those are the five that I feel are fairly important. Now you probably have your own five. There's a lot of things that you should put out there as a deal breaker, you know, any abusive stuff or any controlling issues, all those kind of things. You want to make sure they're a deal breaker. But sometimes people have really strong deal breaking uh, um, views that are could be altered a little bit. It doesn't have to be that strict on what you will or won't allow in your life. You want to be able to meet somebody and eventually have a relationship. So be open. Don't have a type that you will only go for the same thing. Change up your thinking a little bit here. If you're having a tough time dating and you're really ready for a relationship, think about what you've done in the past and just make a few alterations because I really think it will help you. Sometimes we don't know that we're repeating 
this sort of scenario about what we want and what we don't want in a relationship. And it's actually the biggest problem as to why we're not meeting somebody. Thank you so much for tuning in to Dear Cyber Sue today. I really appreciate you watching my videos. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so and click like and please leave any comments or sh show suggestions that you have for me. Thanks so much everyone. Have a great day. Bye.